Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Fantastic Female Role Models. And today I have an extra fantastic female role model here for all of you. This is Rachel, um, who is an ER nurse. Um, so she's she's doing big stuff right now. She's got a very busy life. Um, and she made some time to talk to me about all of her going ons. Uh, Rachel, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I am, as I said, an ER nurse. Uh, I've been working at St. Francis Emergency Room in Evanston for the past six years. I graduated from Elmhurst College with my BSN in 2014, um, and I'm currently working on my master's um, at Resurrection University. So not the best timing for going back to school, but getting her done. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I've worked there ever since I graduated. Awesome. So is that going to be your for forever nursing gig or are you going to? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Got us. I mean, you never know. Things can change. Yeah. I try not to plan like too terribly far in the future now. Um, right now I'm, I'm happy there. Um, there's a lot of benefits to having been there for, you know, for over five years, um, so I have my schedule the way I want it. There's a lot to be said about that, so I'm, gotcha. I'm content right now. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, that makes sense. Can't you don't want to mess up a good thing? Indeed. All right, awesome. So, so you're you're an ER nurse. Um, what in what inspired you to take that path? Um, is that what you always wanted to do? Um, did you want to maybe be like a doctor or a different type of nurse or anything like that, or did what what? How'd you get to here? Yeah, I wish I had like a very like heartfelt story about why I went into nursing. I don't. Um, when I was a kid, I would I was very fascinated by um, by medical shows and anatomy and all that jazz. And um, I watched this show called Trauma Life in the ER, which was okay. like a documentary series. Um, mm -hmm. And they showed so much stuff on there that like would not fly anymore. Um, but I just remember watching these nurses like do this crazy stuff. And I remember thinking like, well, I can't do anything else like this. I have to be a trauma nurse. Mm -hmm. And I was like six. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember I was eating pasta one day watching this, this show. And uh, my mom walks in and she's horrified because on the screen, they'd had this man's chest cut open and they were trying to save this guy's life. And my mom's like, oh my God, like, what are you watching? And I was like, no, 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 mom, it's okay. It's a thoracotomy. Okay. They're going to try and massage the heart. It's a very interesting. <laughs> she was just like, okay. <laughs> just going to walk out slowly. Yeah. So, uh, so it, it's neat because it was always like a hundred percent what I wanted to do. And I get to do that now, which is okay. cool. Cool. Okay. So, so that you, you've, you've realized your, your like life stream and your, you're like on your way you're doing it yeah which was like weird to do so early I guess I, I thought it was going to take longer I right. guess to get to the ER to get to a trauma center all those things um mm -hmm. and then it just kind of like happened right away after I graduated which was crazy right um so it's kind of fun now I'm like good at what I do and yeah leaves leaves room for exploring other things yeah, you get to do what you want to do now because you you're very set in your career and you you can go and explore all the things that you want to explore. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And to your to your question about wanting to be a doctor. Yeah. Um, I really like the role of nurse right now, um, and I think I will always like mm -hmm. that role where doctors are really important, and right. I'm lucky to work in a space where we are super close with our physicians and have a great relationship and can be mm -hmm. very autonomous at times um but like that bedside nurse like you have to have somebody that knows what they're doing and they right. have to be good at the job and so I guess that is where I'm really passionate about nursing because we're the hands-on people right we're, we're gonna we're gonna catch the patient decompensating we're the ones doing the tasks doing the skills and um so I really like that role yeah. Will it change? I don't know. But right now I really like that role. Right. Cause you're you're like the doers. You're the people who do not like all the work, but you guys you guys yeah. do a lot of the hands-on stuff yeah. that majority. doctors are kind of like, eh, 
So yeah, well, they're you know they got a million other other they got other stuff <laughs> going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Cool. 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 So so obviously um, there are a lot of challenges to being an ER nurse. Um, there's and that's obviously changed a lot in the last several months. Um, yeah. How has your job changed uh, since COVID happened? I think luckily for for those of us in in the ER, um, like we're already in this like rapidly changing environment all the time. Like you come on to shift and you don't know you don't know what's going to happen. You might sit on your bed all night, or you're running and you don't have time to pee or eat. Right. Um, and you just don't, you don't know what's coming in those doors. Mm-hmm. And so I think we were kind of like uniquely able to handle the challenges of like not knowing what our department was going to look like day to day, not knowing what our protocols were going to be. Um, that first wave, I think that was the biggest challenge was just kind of flying by the seat of our pants as recommendations were slowly coming in. Right. Um, our ER was not built to handle you know, a bunch of negative pressure situations either. So you'd come in and like, there would be tarps around a certain area. And it was like, okay, I guess that is what we're doing today. That's That's fine. That's the place where they're all going. All right. Yeah, we we called it, we call it COVID city. Um, (laughs) But, and and it would just, it would change. It would change like almost every shift, sometimes hour by hour. Um, So a lot of us would just pick up extra hours. We were there like every day during the week. So we wouldn't miss what like the new Things update was. Yeah. Um, Cause to me, that was stressful. If I was gone for a day or two days, I'd come back and be like, whoa, whoa what's, what is the process right now? Right. Uh, Someone fill me in. So, and I think that, you know, now coming into a second wave, like that part of the anxiety is not there anymore. Cause we're like, oh yeah, we're just going to like, do the thing again like that's fine yeah you have a you have an established procedure now yeah Yeah. um I do think the hard one of the hard things now is um you know in spring when this all started I think a lot of us felt kind of empowered and it was kind of um I don't know like we were being lauded as like these these heroes and I think that helped a lot of us like come into work every day mm-hmm. so it's like we, we were like part of something kind of big and important and you know not like we needed the praise or anything but I think it just gave us this momentum where we wanted to be there and wanted to do the thing um and right. now for the second wave you know people are tired of COVID I'm tired of COVID um but like we've gone from being heroes to like essentially being gaslighted yeah um and that is a totally new kind of psychological toll on all this like it's much more exhausting this time around and not because it's harder right like actual work like doing the things in some ways that is easier because we understand more what to do Mm -hmm. but just like from that kind of mental standpoint it's it's feeling already more taxing yeah you know and just to speak on that coming from someone who is not in any way medical at all. Um, But like I work in schools and um, the big push, it's always seems to me has been that we need to return to normal. And I feel like you might agree with this is that there, that normal is gone there. That's not going to happen. You know, we've, we're (laughs) way past that. Um, and what we really should be focusing on is how to best handle what we're what we're dealing with right now, our reality. And so in the school setting, that's we need to be virtual. We need to be teaching kids through technology. We need to be putting the time and effort and the resources into doing that. And I know that the school district I'm working for isn't doing that. They're trying to get back to having kids in classrooms. And I understand where they're coming from, but it's super frustrating that that's what they're trying to do. Um, And I, I, I honestly, like, obviously a hospital or a trauma center is not going to be like, let's go back to normal. Like, you know, but like, (laughs) but seeing that kind of thing happen, you know, is obviously really frustrating because you're, you're in the Chicago area, at least they're kind of working on it. Yeah. 
trying. <laughs> trying, but trying, but failing sort of thing. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know, that's like a whole nother like complicated thing, but. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I guess it's been, just, I'm sorry, my cat is. It's all good. <laughs> we love guest stars. <laughs> um, I think it's just been disheartening to see just the blatant disregard of human life. And that is what it's come down to. Yeah. It's just, that's what it is. I have to name it that because that is what's happening. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that if your life has not been touched by it, I I can see where people behave the way they behave, but it's, it's challenging because I feel like with so many other things that have resulted in such losses of life, like our country has reacted so viscerally to that. And, right. Um, so to have this just be like, oh, well, you know, the weak and the old are going to die. It's like, well, that's right. not like a great. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing. It's not like, <laughs> well, oh, darn. It's a great thing. Right. No. Yeah. Um, so that's, I don't know. It's, it's the way our, our country thinks, I think. I don't, I don't know. Well, well, maybe that'll change maybe. Soon. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> really? knock on all the wood you have in your apartment make sure you're you're ready to go <laughs> yeah well who knows that i i'm i'm so tired of trying to figure out what's going to happen next i'm just here for the ride now like yes i have adopted the the same <laughs> the same outlook it's just, it's just easier to passively let it happen <laughs> at this point yes. yeah radical yeah. acceptance <laughs> right exactly um so going off of that then how can the average person help mitigate this pandemic you you are a medical professional um obviously they aren't always listening to medical professionals but might as well yeah. put it out there what 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 can you do to slow this down yeah honestly it's kind of listen to everything that's been kind of shoved down our throats the last nine months you know you need to mask up um you need to try and avoid going out to busy places, eating out, please don't eat out. Um, don't go to those little tent things that they've built. It's just like being inside. Um, hand hygiene, I think is a big one. Just carry the, the hand sanitizer with you all the time, everywhere you go, every surface you touch outside, just be washing your hands afterwards. That goes a ridiculously long way um, with preventing this. Um, I mean, it's hard, like winter is going to be hard, like, but th this is where we're at. And so following kind of those CDC recommendations, um, keeping as isolated as possible, things like that are going to help mitigate this. It's, we're also entering into flu season. These are all things we should be doing anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, this has the potential to get really gnarly this season. And so, you know, everybody needs to to do their thing and do their job because I am not a frontliner. The The public is the frontliner. Right. You know, by the right. time you get to us, like we're already in a bad way. <laughs> exactly. Right. We're not, it's not good if you get to, if you get to Rachel, that's, that's not a good sign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ruh -roh. Okay. Um, so moving on to maybe more of a more of a positive note after talking about death and COVID. Um, <laughs> so what do you think your greatest accomplishment as a nurse has been in those six years that you've been working? Um, uh, yeah, so I've been I've been really fortunate to work. It's a small hospital, but I've been fortunate to work somewhere that is really um, dedicated to career development and kind of personal development as far as your your nursing. Um, self goes mm -hmm. so i am dual board certified in um, emergency nursing and trauma nursing and i also hold a um, trauma nurse specialist license which is like yeah. a, it's a special thing for like illinois but it's, it, it's a fun course and all that jazz mm -hmm. um but probably like the biggest like thing i've been able to do is i became a sexual assault nurse examiner um that's awesome and kind of took over our hospitals um like planning for sexual assault response. Um, I wrote our treatment plan for the state, which was thrust upon me immediately after finishing my <laughs> training. But, but of I course. <laughs> um, 
and I've been kind of in charge of just educating staff and kind of acting as a liaison in that way. Um, Cause there is only one of me. So right. I have to kind of set up, you know, resources and things like that. Um, Cause it can be kind of a complicated, um, it's a complicated case. And right. if you're not doing it all the time, it can be really overwhelming. Um, mm. So I think that's like right now, like kind of my pride and joy thing that I've been able to do. Yeah, that's something to put on a resume. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Look what um, I did. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I know when I was an RA in college and I had to, to learn and, and kind of start to work through that kind of process. I never actually had to, to do anything about it, thankfully, but like yeah. knowing the procedures and understanding how, how to help people is, is taxing and it, and it and it does take a lot of resources so the fact that you're kind of the the person for that is is fantastic that's yeah. a lot of work it's been, it's been really cool it's been very empowering um i obviously i love being able to give power back to survivors um mm -hmm. and it feels like it feels good to know like they'll see somebody and work with somebody in that time um who like knows the ins and outs of kind of the process with law enforcement and right. um, what's nice about becoming a, a sane, a sexual assault nurse examiner is mm -hmm. you can work independently of the physician. So sure. um, I can do a full exam. I can do all the evidence collection. Really all the physician needs to do is pop their head in unless there's, you know, big injuries or things like that, but they really just need to greet the patient and do a quick, you know, a quick small exam. Um, right which is nice because then that patient really only needs to be that vulnerable with like one person instead right. of it being a resident and then an attending and like, right. you know, this separate person is going to do the, you know, a speculum exam. It's like, nope, nope it'll just work with me. And right. um, it's just, it's been a really cool journey into that. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. I just repeated myself clearly. I'm still in the coma from yesterday. <laughs> well, everybody else I've been talking to, I, I started working with kindergartners and first graders. And since then, my like, my ability to process information has decreased rapidly. That's so okay. that's all right. That's okay. I'll, I'll get there eventually. I just got to adjust. Um, <laughs> okay. So you're, you're a sane nurse, which is fantastic. Um, now you've you said that you've been given a lot of opportunities to to improve your your career in nursing. Um, is there anything that you're working on right now other than that that you've that you've started working on or you're excited about? Um, well, other, if, if you're I, doing your masters, so yeah. So that um, the MSN has to kind of get done before I can like move on to to what else I would like to do. Um, sure. And it kind of bounces off of my time as a scene nurse and a forensic nurse, um, as well as some personal experiences. But my goal um, after I complete my MSN is I would like to go back to school um, and get my master's in human sexuality with a focus on sex education. Hey, um, that's fantastic. I think, you know, as a nurse, we have like our nurse brain and when we see problems, either like a problem at work or a problem with community health, things like that. Uh, we mm -hmm. want to find like a root cause of some of that. And right. um, I can't help but think uh, that some of some of the sexual violence I um, see and encounter uh, perhaps could be curbed by teaching children and young adults, like actually educating them. Young sex. men, particularly, and, probably. And, you know, it's uh, I think it's everybody, really. Right. I know I sat through my didactic course for the same training, um, right. and I was appalled at how little I, I I sat there and had to fill out a diagram of a vulva, and I was appalled at how little I knew about my own anatomy, and like that right. is that troubled me so deeply. Mm -hmm. Um. So again, it's been just kind of like, this has been churning for about a year of like, right. okay, look, yeah. it would be really cool to like do something about this. Right. Um, you know, I've also 
had my own like health struggles and, and, and things that have made maybe that sexual part of my life really challenging where like now coming into being able to seek out more knowledge and more options like oh okay none of this <laughs> needed to be so terrible right I could have um, figured that, yeah could have been if somebody would have educated me right on you know some more things and about my body and about not having shame and um right so I feel very passionate about kind of like bridging into that kind of in the next five years um, that's, that's awesome and I'd like to I'd like to work for a school district I'd like to work with like fifth grade through 12th grade um as as a professional <laughs> like not your health teacher no offense no, to health teachers, like, not right. your PE teacher but you have a sex educator there right who can teach kids consent right who can talk about different bodies and how different people look um mm -hmm. you know who can just frame it in a really intelligent appropriate way um i think we could curb a lot of terrible things yeah absolutely i i completely i mean i i we went to middle school and high school together and we both experienced the exact same health curriculum and it wasn't <laughs> fantastic <laughs> <It's> like, <"Whoa." laughs> yeah and yeah. like i know i took health over the summer so like i got the crash course of it in high school and like yeah. now to be fair like was it I, like use a condom like i think oh, that's what it was like summarized into don't have sex or use a condom oh we didn't even i didn't even get that i don't think they even talked about that in mine so you know it's like it's just very it's like i don't know it's it's very dismal so i would like to be part of kind of this newer um kind of revolution and just like arming people with knowledge about their own bodies and about their rights and right. um just think it's important so anyway that's like my my on the horizon baby that i'm like <laughs> that's a fantastic horizon <laughs> <Excited> so <about. laughs> yeah no that's really cool i that's that's a super awesome like um it's you know it's amazing to be i i live in wisconsin now and like if you can believe it the the health program here is even worse than our school. <laughs> so I've I've uh no. I've uh I've seen I've seen what can happen when those things don't happen. So it's um yeah that's fantastic. Um yeah. and maybe when you revolutionize Illinois sex education, you can come up and do Wisconsin too because we would love it. Revolution. Or at least I would love it. <laughs> I don't know about anyone else, I but I know I would be all for it. So cool, yeah. awesome. Okay, so cool things on the horizon. Super great nurse, super awesome. If someone wants to be like you, someone wants to be as cool, as good of a nurse as you, what are your, what are your, what's your advice? Both personal advice, education wise, all of that. What would you tell them? How would you get to being you? So I'd say you have to, if something piques your interest, um, you have to follow that and people are going to try and dissuade you. People may say you are not cut out for it. People, you know, at the, that's just like the nature of the beast of the world we live in is you're going to get a lot of pushback. And, you know, I had many professors telling me that I should probably not be a nurse and should probably, you know, consider maybe an easier track or a different, you know, right. course of study. Um, that I definitely should not go into ER because yes, I have anxiety and that'll just make it worse and right. all kinds of things um, like that. So you're gonna face pushback and mm -hmm. you have to be kind of strong-willed and know yourself um, and push for what your heart wants. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to kind of go with that is that it's okay to kind of wait for the right moment too. Mm -hmm. you want to fight but also a lot of times there's gonna be kind of a moment to jump and I think for me in my life a lot of times those two moments do align a lot right and so I've learned that it, it you know I can't look at my peers right. and be like oh god like they're they're at this point in their career and they're doing this and the things do come when you manifest them right it will come to you. It may not be on the timeline you have anticipated or dreamt of or wanted, but they're going to come. Mm -hmm. um, so you just have to 
you have to pay attention for when those moments or that moment is happening, when you can marry your drive to the right opportunity. And then you jump and you go yeah. for it. Right. Uh, and the last thing there is um, kind of, I call it finding your sponges or, or becoming a sponge, like finding, finding people you can glean as much um, knowledge and experience from. Mm-hmm. And this is especially important in nursing. Um, I've had like two or three coworkers that I just grew from. Mm-hmm. Um, and these were people, people will naturally do this for you too. When they're a teacher, when they are, um, when they are that kind of personality, they will, they will give you knowledge and, and tell you their experiences and want to teach you. And so you have to latch on to those people you're going to look at as mentors and be a sponge. Right. And take like take just take as much as you can in from them because those are the folks that are gonna help shape you. Right. And because not everybody's gonna want to teach you and not everybody's gonna be a great mentor. Um, and that's okay. Right. So you have to but you have to do your homework a little bit too, especially in nursing. You have to find those teachers and mm-hmm. they're there where you're working. And then you have to take the time, humble yourself and listen and, and glean from them everything you can. So going off of that, then are there are there people that you still kind of draw inspiration from where you're working, or do you draw inspiration from like uh, friends and family, or or what kind of keeps you going um, now that you got there? Yeah, I think you know I am really fortunate to have like a lot of amazing friends. Um, I've had obviously amazing parents, um, wonderful mentors growing up. Um, mm-hmm. So I think I still take from all of them um even my friends in like completely different career fields and stuff um I I always look at people's drives and look at people following their passions and like that is something that is wildly inspiring to me and so by surrounding myself with that kind of energy and those kind of people even if they're not most of my friends are not nurses right um many, you know, many actresses and, and many people in the entertainment um, industry in Chicago and, and all of that. Um, mm. It's the same, it's the same overarching drive and feeling. So just try and keep my circle kind of as such so that I'm always inspired and surrounded by driven folk. Right. I, um, that actually reminds me of something, um, Mr. Nashen from Lincoln. Um, he always said the the people who you surround yourself with are what other people are going to see you as. And I always kind of took that to heart, but it also goes the other way. The people who you are with are the ones who are going to be feeding and driving you. Um, yeah. And they're going to really push you in the direction you want to go. So that having that inner circle to to kind of yeah. like back you up and 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 I don't know, bounce yourself off of is really going to be beneficial. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's awesome. So, oh, so you're, are you, that, that actually kind of leads into something else I want to talk to you about. You were a huge musical theater person in high school. Um, I saw like three or four of your, <laughs> of your performances. Um, yeah. And so is that something that you're still like interested in doing, want to do? Yeah, it definitely, with? definitely is something I miss. Um, you know, I mean, what I love about ER nursing is it is kind of like being on stage and performing because sure. right. you have to have kind of that underlying like adrenaline kind of just ready to go when things get crazy. Right. Um, so I do like I get a little bit of that, you know, that buzz uh, just from work. Right. But I do. I definitely do deeply miss the stage and I miss acting and singing and performing. Um, I prior to the pandemic was like very into karaoke. Um, okay, sure, yeah. So I'd be, you know, I had a number of bars I was at kind of like every every night I was off um, right. just to be goofy and to get up there and no pressure and sing. Um, but I think, you know, maybe post pandemic, it, you know, it may be time to to venture onto a cabaret stage or something like that again. Um, right, yeah. I and you know, I still sing with the church choir. I still, you know, right. do stuff like that. But um, I think especially after a year of not having karaoke and not having 
like any right. outlet um you know it might be time to do something again yeah so dust we'll off see. dust off the acting chops and maybe Stay get back tuned. in there yeah right <laughs> limber up yeah. you're ready to go yeah <laughs> yeah no that i get it like this whole the last couple nine months like um i'm glad that a lot of my hobbies are are indoor hobbies because if I if I didn't have a lot of things to do in here, I don't know what I would do myself. <laughs> I sleep a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Lots of sleeping. Right. I I when I'm bored, I eat a lot, which has been kind of bad, but also kind of good. So now I'm trying to like like boredom eat healthy things. Nice. And it kind of it's not really working that well, but I'm little victories. So small victories. That's all yeah, we got. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So let's, let's about face again. We did it earlier. Let's do it again. Um, so, um, have you faced any obstacles, obstacles to your path in, in any way, specifically because you were a woman or, um, have you kind of dodged that? You know, I think I've been stupid fortunate, um, that, you know, I haven't, I have not felt that at all, um, which is, I, I feel really deeply lucky about that. Um, I work, like, generally the people I work with are very progressive. Um, mm -hmm. It's a really nice mix of humans um, where I'm at. Uh, there's quite a few, like, our, our leaders are women. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, in our awesome. department. And, um, you know, our chief nursing nursing officer is a woman, um, mm. and 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 more so, they're women of of color. Right. So I I'm really proud to like be able to work in the you know in the institution I work in that values truly values like hard work over kind of gender or anything like that. Like that. Yeah. So I've been really deeply fortunate. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I keep asking people that question and no one yet has said that they felt that way. So I'm like, I'm like waiting for like that first person to be like, let me tell you. And it hasn't happened yet. So I'm actually yeah. kind of happy that th that hasn't happened yet. But yeah. also, yeah. Now, like um, health wise and things like that, <laughs> that's a different story. Well, yeah. Do you want to yeah. talk about that any at all? Whatever you want, I, I can do whatever. I don't want to. Oh no, yeah, no. If, if, you know, we're we're here to learn. So if you want to, if you want to, what are have there been health issues that have directly come from you being a woman? <laughs> um, I mean, not like I have experienced where physicians, uh, you know, I have a I have a long history of chronic illness. I, I have celiac disease. I have um, leaky gut. I have just kind of a whole host of special, you know, autoimmune going on. Um, mm -hmm. And that, because I'm a woman, um, most of my symptoms were, were like disregarded. Sure. As a young adult, as a young woman, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like, well, you're, you're a lady, you're gonna have pain sometimes. Well. <laughs> but have you felt my pain? Like, that's not like a super good answer, but okay. Right. Um, so I guess in, in that way in life, I very much felt right. that, um, yeah. the, the heaviness of that. I'm, I'm glad that I didn't need to experience that also <laughs> on, a career, right. on a career path because right. it was, you know, very disheartening. Yeah. Because uh, I actually had something wrong. Right. Yeah, exactly. You were right. You know, you know it's and like. And my questions were always just why? Like, why do I feel this way? I'm not asking you for pain medicine. I, I don't right. want sympathy yeah. I would just like an answer because I'm distressed mm -hmm. right. <laughs> over my body being mm -hmm. out of whack um right. and that I think you know I have seen I have seen that in practice where I work where right. sometimes women are they're um they're just kind of blown off a little bit their symptoms and mm -hmm. um so that has changed my practice as a nurse right. I really tried to to key in to, to those um, misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but that reminds me of some of the training I've had to do as a teacher. Um, cause we, my school district has this really big push about, it's called culturally, culturally responsive teaching. And it's all about how different people from different communities have different values. And those values change how they interact at school because they're grown, they've grown up in a different home culture. That's what they call it. So like, yeah. um, you know, someone like me and someone who might be African-American or Mexican-American or whatever, they're going to have different home experiences. And so that's going to change how they behave when they get to school because they're used to that kind of behavior. But, yeah. but the, the expectations of school are definitely modeled for people like me and not yeah. necessarily people who write. So you get it. Um, yeah. And so and I feel like, you know, the medical field would have been one of the fields that would have really been on top of that sort of thing, since you have to deal with everybody yeah. all the time. I mean, I can, I mean, I have many, like, very vivid learning moments in my brain, like, aha moments where I was like, oh, oh, oh you need to do better, Rachel, right. like, you need right. to, you need to pocket this, and you need to do better mm -hmm. next because right. we are taught you know we're taught like culturally culturally competent care yeah um which is like our, same you know, thing. our our model for that um right. but yeah i mean there is there have definitely been instances where i have uh been humbled sure. by not realizing something um uh and like growth is really uncomfortable and realizing you're like having a moment where you're not being you know culturally competent and you're you know kind of yeah it's yeah. hard no i, you I understand pocket, it. you have it's to happening. pocket it and you have to grow right and force yourself to be better mm -hmm. you know yeah absolutely yeah no those those are those are like the hardest parts of of anything you do is, is learning that you what you did was just not right yep you know and you're just like oops I mean, like, yeah. that's not, but then taking that oops and being like, now I got to fix the oops and make sure that I never make the oops again. Um, and, and then really have to think about you and why, why you made that mistake in the first place, you know, and where yeah. that came from. And um, which has been, I don't know, it's an interesting journey for me. And I'm sure it has been too. We grew up in the same town. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 <sighs> Yeah, it's funny. My wife is always like, she doesn't, um, she doesn't call uh, Park Ridge Park Ridge. She calls it um, Bougie Ridge, which is which is is accurate, but it's also like, it's it's an interesting take on it. Just like just like that's the fact that that's the conclusion and the name that she's come to for our for our hometown, based off of her very limited interactions with it and like me telling her stories. Um, so, but that's a whole other video. We could talk about that for the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing, yeah. Just wait. In a couple months, Rachel will come back. We'll dissect our hometown. <laughs> oh, I'm here. I am here for that. <laughs> yeah, we can get a whole bunch of people on. It could be a big panel. Yes. Yeah. Panel. We can just talk that's about true. how awful it is. <sighs> All right. I'll start getting on it. You'll you'll get a message from me later. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fantastic. Okay. Awesome. Um, so the last few things I wanted to talk about were were mental health related, if that's that's cool with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the the first the first thing I was gonna say is is uh, I know that like like me, you have have struggled with different mental health issues. Um, and I was just interested in knowing when you first started to notice um, your mental health issues or when you started to to realize that something was wrong. Not that it's wrong, but you know, something was not yeah. quite the way it was. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I my a lot of my all of my like severe depression and, and anxiety um uh, actually stems from my celiac disease. Um oh, well, there you go. I had my adrenals were all messed up, like after 19 years of being malnourished. Right. Uh it it changes your brain chemistry. Right. Um, it changes, you know, your, your, if your gut is messed up, that's where your serotonin comes from. Like, right. yeah, you're going to have a big, a big systemic problem. Um, mm -hmm. so I actually do not have memory from childhood where I wasn't depressed. Gotcha. Now as like a four-year-old, I didn't have words for like, Hey, 
does everybody else feel like the world's ending all the time and you feel really 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 sad all the time like the i time. just that was how i was it wasn't because of anything right. outside of my body or my person um this was like an innate thing that i had from the time i had memory um and these are not things i i realized <laughs> so much later in life right um so yeah, it was very profound, very ever present in my life. Um, and it really kind of like came to a head in 2018. That's so what it all just kind of long. Long. Um, you know, because I've I've been, I hate, I hate the word like high functioning. I hate that. Uh, right. but that's kind of like what it I, I appeared to be very smart and right. very driven and you know obviously I had this career going, I, right. you know, I mean, I, I was able to do all of these things, mm -hmm. albeit not super gracefully sometimes. Right. Um, but I was able to power through and do things. And, and by the time 2018 ruled around, I was just done. Yeah. Like no. I couldn't compensate anymore. So my whole life compensating and, and trying to mask and be normal and right. not, you know, be a wreck all the time. Mm -hmm sometimes more successful than other times right um but yeah by the time 2018 hit i was like burnt out done um yeah with family treatments i you know and i was just very successful person right very funny very much like you know uh the life of the party right uh, but it was a very deep struggle um mm -hmm. for me i finally got relief when i um and it, it took a lot of literature coming out uh, about the the head gut connection and all that. It, right. it took me reading a lot of things for me to be like, uh, oh, okay, okay. I figured um, it out. I know what's going on now. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was treating the inflammation in my body, and that was through diet because I have an autoimmune disease that is centered right. around it's causing all this, right? Um, so I, I had been gluten free for like ten years, but I had to go on like a full anti-inflammatory situation um gotcha and i woke up three weeks later and i had no symptoms anymore whoa hey that's awesome which was insane after 20 plus years of right right feeling terrible i i thought i was having a stroke i woke up and i was like this is really weird yeah like i felt physically lighter like it was mm -hmm. it was very strange um yeah. Right now, during pandemic times, I would say I am now situationally depressed. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like, there's there's a trauma response happening right. now. And like, I can name it. I know when it, um, it does not make it easy to deal with right now. Right. Um, I knew there were going to be elements of that coming. Right. After what happened this spring, I was hoping it, <laughs> I could not start feeling them until like, you know, after all of this was you know, a little more mitigated. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, tis the season. <laughs> it is the season. For, you know, for for some, you know, some people who struggle with. Right. No, with all this. Is, this is the time of year. Uh, you know, and it's been a, a whole hell of a year. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it's yeah. been hard. Yeah. So, so now that you've you've, I guess you, I wouldn't say solved because it's never really a, a thing that you solve. It, it's just something that you, you figure out and, and try to, and do your best to, to, to live with. It never goes away. Um, but now that you've kind of gotten to a point where you feel healthy, um, what are the kind of coping mechanisms and coping techniques that you use specifically to try to maintain that, that healthy lifestyle? Because I know that for me, that's the kind of thing that I've, I've had to do. So when I was um, kind of like you, I haven't been depressed my entire life. At least I don't think I have, but I know when it started and I know, um, and I know that I hit it very well, just like maybe you did for, for years, um, until I kind of had my, my moment where I was like, yep, can't do this anymore. This is, this is over. Um, and, um, and I know a lot of the things that I've had to work on were behavioral changes, um, learning about, mental coping skills, um, which is something I was already pretty good at, but like relearning them because I was doing them so unhealthily, um, you know, and like stuff like that. Are there things that you have tried to learn and implement into your life that have also kind of helped you in those, in that situation? Or 
because yours is coming from inflammation and through from your autoimmune disease, is that something you really haven't had to pick up on? Um, so with, you know, with the, the kind of inflammatory stuff, like I know what I have to do to like feel better. And it's, I just need to be disciplined with what I'm eating. Right. Which like, let me tell you during pandemic times, <laughs> like I, I just too. want cheese all the time. Like, right. um, so that's been, it's, it's been a hard balance to maintain a lot of that. Um, as far as this kind of post-traumatic stress that's happening now, right. um, I'm having to, you know, re revisit a lot of the, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy that I did, I, you know, back, back years yeah. ago when I, I was yeah. trying to get stuff, you know, under control. Um, but I think it, it does, the behavioral changes are important. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, I am trying to drink less, um, which is hard when you're an ER nurse. We love yeah. to, we love to get off the chips and, um, but I'm like really, especially like it, things hit very hard this week because of the holidays and because of, you know, just a multitude of factors. So yeah. I was finally like, oh, okay. Um, we need to kind of buckle down a little bit. Again, has not been graceful. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, I think for me, kind of sleeping is really important. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, sure. I think that I've allowed myself to have days where I, I may sleep for 20 hours. Um, but because of the stress of work and right. less work nights, which is not good for you. Yeah. So sometimes I sometimes need a couple days of catch up and I've learned to not beat myself up over that. Right. Um, to just listen to my body because I probably actually am exhausted if like that is what I'm feeling that I need. Right. Um, I think something I need to get back on the bandwagon with is running. Mm -hmm. um, Me too. I haven't been super motivated with that because all the races got canceled this year and I, know. I like my life. Um, but I think I need to, to put forth more of an effort with that again. Right. Um, so it's like, I know what, what is in my toolbox and what I need to do. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, you know, taking those steps <laughs> right. can be hard. It, yeah. it can be hard and weirdly exhausting. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Definitely. you know, but yeah. I, I know what to do. Right. <laughs> Yeah, me, me, me as well. And I guess, I guess the point I was trying to get at is, is if you are feeling that way, you need to figure out what needs to be in your toolbox. Yeah. And there are ways to figure that out. Um, and um, you can't, you can't f fix it until you ask and try to figure it out. You know, both of us obviously put that off yeah. for a long time. Um, and all that is doing is, is causing you harm. Um, and so um you know if when it comes down to it if you feel like something's not right you know even though it's not you know your bones or your you know your muscles or something like that it's still part of you you can still have to you still have to seek yeah. help um there are medical professionals there for that therapists part. yeah psychiatrists yep. all kinds of great mm -hmm. things yep. um trauma um oh my gosh what's the word trauma release exercise. I've had a lot of like really nice, I might actually do that tonight now that we're talking about that, but that's like a thing people can like YouTube right. and Google. Um, right. So there, yeah, there's a ton of, what it comes down to for me is like um, having like the hard conversations with myself. Mm -hmm. where I have to kind of look in the mirror and be like, hey, you, like, are you actually doing all the things in your power that you can do right now? Mm -hmm to set yourself up for being okay. Are right. you doing the things? And those are those are hard conversations and they suck because like it's on you then. Right. Um, you know, and it's not it's not like you can will yourself out of everything. That's not what I'm saying, but it's right. like, well, are you are you eating well enough right now? Mm, right. Are you drinking too much? Are you, you know, asking right. those hard questions so that you can at least give yourself a base. Right. You're having some success in in helping right. yourself 
and seeking out these other avenues of health. Right. So. You've got to give yourself a solid base to stand on before you can try to get higher than that. And yeah. if there's nothing solid to stand on, then you're never going to get anywhere. Um, and I would know that because I was definitely not doing that for myself for years. Yeah. And, and it's hard. It's it is. It is super hard. Yeah. It took it took a traumatic a traumatic experience for me to finally decide that I was done with that. And it just happened to be when I was like 25 instead of when I was, you know, 16. Yeah. <laughs> I had it at both ages. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Oh, yeah, I know. <sighs> so many great experiences. Um, so awesome. Um, that, those are all the things I really wanted to talk with you about. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the internet while I have you here and you have the opportunity to, to say your, say your stuff? Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't prep for the after questions. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> No, I just thank you so much for having me, though. This is oh, like, yeah, absolutely. Really cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and that that Park Ridge breakdown thing is happening. I'm going to make I am sure. here for any panel discussion you want to have. I am here. Perfect. I am generally bored. <laughs> Hit Sounds me great. up. <laughs> All right. I will round up some more panelists, and we are going to make this happen. It is going to be fantastic. Yes. <sighs> yes. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you, Rachel, for, for making time, even though it seems like you're saying you have tons of it, but that's cool. Um, and um, thank you for all that you're doing. Um, I know you said that you're not like the front line, but you're, you guys are, are doing a whole lot for people who not, don't necessarily believe that you need to be doing it. And that is huge. And there are people who, who think what you're doing is great and we do support you um even if you're not hearing it all the time there there are a lot of us who do you know when i when i see the numbers i think about you and, and other people i know who are medical professionals so um thank you for continuing to get up and go to work and and helping people the best you can um even though they're obviously we're a lot of us are obviously asking for it because we we can't seem to follow basic rules and guidelines but you know <laughs> details <laughs> awesome well, um, if you want to know more about Rachel, um, I will have uh, some information about her and all her awesome things on my website. Um, and um, you can see more of our fantastic female role models there as well. Um, Rachel, you are our fourth one. Congratulations, you're number four. Um, <laughs> and there will be more to come. Um, I've got a lot of people who are in school right now and are like, please don't talk to me until I'm done. So <laughs> I'll have more coming then. Uh, so yeah, I hope you're having, you hope you had a great holiday and we'll see you later. Bye. Ooh, button.